Merlin, network magic, incredible real network dashboards. Hey everybody, John Capobianco is back and uh, I've been meaning to uh, do this. I spent a little time on some WebEx stuff, but in the background and over time, I've been working on the Elastic Logstash Kibana Elk stack and I've had a lot of interest in the network search engine and visualization. This video is meant to be built on top of that first video where I was really learning of, and I'm still a beginner and I'm still learning, but that was kind of like prototype type stuff. And if you watch those videos, I struggle with timestamps and I struggle getting certain dashboards to work. And there's a lot of what if and theoretical stuff. Well, the wonderful people at Elastic, several of them, have reached out to me. And I've had two 30-minute sessions with um, Elastic um, uh, developer advocates. And they pointed me in the right direction and they listened to my use case and they listened to what I was trying to do and they heard my struggles. They sent me some documentation. They sent me to the community. They um, tried to help me narrow my focus and really use the core tool set. So let me get the whiteboard out and talk about where I missed, what I got wrong. And I don't mind getting things wrong. That's how I learn. It's making mistakes, iteration, hypotheses, try a formula, look at the results. And I did have some success, but here I, I've really learned some things and, and let's talk about it. So in the original video, I and the network search engine will still work, but the I just want to point out the direction I got about the app search is um, maybe not a great fit for our network data. There's too much of it. It's not really in the right structure or format. We can kind of jam it in there, but what we want is to build on Elasticsearch, not necessarily their enterprise app search feature. Okay, so check. I've taken that out of the code that I'm refining for another pull request. The other thing, and this is important, this is more important. So we have our network device, and what I do serially is learn a bunch of features and then run a bunch of show commands. And here's where I was kind of getting it wrong. I was taking all of this, each one of them, right, the JavaScript object notation, right, this is the JSON, and I was putting it into one index, right, I, one index. But the problem is this particular JavaScript object notation, let's call it VLANs, and it has a particular schema, right, inside of here, of JSON. And let's say interfaces, learned interfaces. Well, it has a totally different JSON schema, right? These are not apples to apples or oranges to oranges. And the index was kind of confused. I'm going to put some question marks here. I'm not really sure what you're asking me to index. There's no real pattern here to index. So the refinement, the refactoring. We're going to just erase to here. What we're doing now is creating an index per a little mini index. I'm not going to draw them all but an index as we crawl, and then we can index the indexes or call from multiple indexes. Pretty cool. And that has really removed these question marks that I had drawn earlier. There's no question mark here. This is an interface JSON schema. I can index that accordingly. All right, so here's the last mistake that I made. And it wasn't really a mistake. Kind of was. It was a mistake was how I was handling it. All right, here's the thing. I was close. I knew I needed time stamps, right? We need time. Um, what time was the, the code brought in? When did you index this set of data so that you can plot things over a data histogram or a time series database or right at the different points of time, what the counter information was at? 
Well, I was trying to stuff my own timestamp in, right? So I have my learn feature, and then I was also trying to stuff in right John's timestamp as its own JSON into the index. I'm going to put the whiteboard down. And what I found, this was very, very, very cool, very neat implementation. And let me show you this. Let's go over about what, we, what we're going to do instead of kind of jamming our own code in. So you have to look up Elasticsearch um, in Jest. I want to lead you to the right. Ingest pipeline, and they talk about ingest pipelines. And they say, you know, incoming documents, or in our case, the JavaScript object notation, we can ingest it, and here we can dissect it, we can make it lowercase, we can manipulate it in this pipeline, and then we stick it into our target index. Now, along the way, what you're going to find is that there's processors, processors, that you can set things or lower case things. Now, you know me, I'm a big Jinja 2 fan, and one of the things I do in my Jinja 2 template is send it to lower case. Well, I could easily take that out of my Jinja 2 template, out of my client side, and anything I send the index, just run it through this lower case processor. Well, one of the processors that what that's available to us is the um, timestamp stuff that we need, which is pretty incredible. So let me show you how to find these things in the Kibana dashboard. If you go to your stack management, right here at the top, they talk about node pipelines. And we can look at time, and I'll just say here Merlin type, and, and right, we have the field and the time value. Now this didn't work out for me, but, but this is we can create a new pipeline here and add our processors and pick from the processor that we want. And look, we could turn something into CSV, convert it, the bytes, append it, uh, all kinds of different things. Strips, convert it to JSON, make it lowercase, remove, rename, lots of different things in here. And what I've done is added the timestamp. Now, how did I do this? And this took a little bit of work for me to figure out. Now I have my deployment and I have my API console and if I just get rid of um, this for now and so I have my server is up. Now I want to create an index and I want to timestamp it. So let me take a step back and I will show you here that it's not anywhere in my code. Nowhere in my Python is there anything about timestamping at all anymore. I've removed that. And let's go through my code with that idea of one function, learn interface in this example, to one index. And then we'll work with multiple indexes later. So I've removed this quite a bit. And um, we have to define Elasticsearch with our cloud ID and our, our authentication. And then for each device in testbed. And what I've decided to do, and I had a little bit of guidance on, from Elastic on this, the ID, not the index, but the ID for the, this set of data that we're indexing into an index, well, I want it to be unique and so that every time I write a set of data to it, it has a unique character field that we can look at and look at over time or over history. And also, I'm not just overwriting, right, if it was ID equals one or learned interface, I'm always going to overwrite that. I just want a unique field there. So I'm using the Python unique ID and I'm making it hex so there's no dashes or anything. It's just a series of characters. Here's my learned interface function. Nothing's changed there and I'm learning interface. And now here, right, I have my template and I'm going to show you the template. So in this learned interface elastic template that I render and I send it the full JavaScript right so in this two parse interface which I'm going to change right now to make this universal right to um, normalize I'm going to say normalize for elastic how about that well in my Jinja 2 template now what I'm feeding it is the full body of JavaScript 
Where did it go here? Learn interface elastic. And I'm using a series of filters. So I'm saying here's my lower case, which I could easily take out of here and move to my server side function. And I'm likely able to replace as well in my server side function. So I might get rid of the Jinja2 template and move all of this to the server side function. For now, I'm okay with it this way because it works and I and I I've you know I'm all right with it. So then I'm replacing what why why lower case and why do I need to replace these fields? And um because Elasticsearch, it has stringent guidelines for what you can index, particularly what the keys can be. Can't be uppercase. So Ethernet with a capital E, one slash one, has two illegal characters, the capital E and the slash. Port dash channel can't have the dash, right? Capital V VLAN 100, not good. So this takes care of that. And then um, here, this is the actual line of code that sends it into, it indexes it into Elasticsearch. And I hear my index ID. This is the key from Elastic when we were collaborating. They said instead of just sending this into device alias and putting all of your data, it's all mix mashed, right? Just say underscore learned interface and that's the index for this particular function so what i'm likely to do is write a function or re write copy this block of code multiple times for all of the other commands um, such as uh, at the top of the list here right the learned acl arp table bgp i'm going to do all that i am going to do all that but let's get back on track here now, the body I'm feeding it is through the Jinja2 template, so it's been normalized for Elasticsearch, and that is the body that I'm sending up. Now, how do we do the timestamp as it's being indexed? All right, so here's what we need. We need a few pieces of the puzzle here. We need our URL, our endpoint, and then we're going to do some things in Postman. So in my Elasticsearch, I have a collection. And there's a couple things that we need to do right off the bat. We need to, because we're dealing with network data, this full string here at the start is what you would get if you hit the copy button, copy endpoint here from Elasticsearch. And then, right, there's some settings that we're going to set up. Our total field limit, make it 10,000 instead of the default 1,000. 1,000 is not enough to even for just learned interfaces. Also, in the nested limit, maybe bring that up to 50 instead of the default 30. I was having problems with nesting. Now, here is how we set up the pipelines. This on the screen right now, and I know it's a little small, is going to be posted to our URL. And then here, it's the important part. Underscore ingest, when it's ingesting, data, underscore pipeline, underscore the name of the pipeline you want. I want Merlin pipeline. In there, I have a description, and I just said timestamp. And here is my processor. And in processor, I only have one, and I'm setting a field known as underscore source ingest time, and the value is a variable from ingest.timestamp and the server side will take care of turning this into a timestamp for me. And then I have to set under my, again, the URL to my Elasticsearch instance. And then this is what my index is going to be called. And in fact, what I'm doing here, when I put this, if it's empty, or I'm going to create this before I send data to it, do the put with the name of your right here is my index and I want settings the index default pipeline is the name of my pipeline and when I send that it sets the pipeline so that anytime anything's ingested into this index it's going to get a timestamp 
isn't it's just it's just incredible it's incredible now what was john doing i was <laughs> i was setting up a variable i was doing json dumps time time stamp or date time date time time iso no milliseconds like it was it was like this big thing and then i had to set that up as json right time stamp inside of mustaches inside of double quotes uh, like I, I don't know that's how i was trying it and it sort of worked i got a timestamp into my database but it had no relation to my index it wasn't right it was its own separate great you've you've put the time in thank you that's what i had done now now i've integrated the time as one of those fields of data and i'll show you this all right so let's go ahead and run the code And um, I'm excited about this. This is really fun. So we're going to run the code. I'm going to have some water. It doesn't take very long. I should have put the time command in. So PyATS is learning and transforming. I'm Jinja templating, and then I'm sending it up into the Elastic. So here, this is a key, right? Status 201, everything worked in less than a second. And here is that UUID that I have for this point in time against this index. So let's take this whole thing and go look at it in Postman first. And then we'll look at it in the Elastic API browser. And then we'll pull it into Kibana, and I'll show you what we can do now. So this is, uh, let's go get, right, learned interface. And the body is empty here. Send. Hey, look at that. So I have a mix of things here. I have my learned interfaces. Let's just do this. As we go along, I don't know how many there are. This might take a second. But I have all the learned interfaces and their information in JavaScript in, so behind this API now. And, and, right there, you can see I have the ingest time now, which is obviously not part of the learned interface. So now I have a timestamp for this information, right? So, you know, if this Ethernet changed to all of a sudden there's packets on it or it's in a different VRF or whatever, we have the timestamp of when that changed. So now I also want to point out if you go back to the parent level here without doc and the document ID, you can get the structure of the, the schema of all of the documents inside of the library so people can program against it. This is a type of long or a boolean or text or a keyword. Pretty neat, pretty neat. All right, let's go back into Elastic now. Did I lose that? Did I forget to? Yeah. Well, hang on, hang on. I already I have it right here in Ubuntu. Let me go here and grab this document. Just to show you, it's in, it's available here as well. Same data. That index is in here somewhere. And away we go with it into Kibana. Now, I have nothing in Kibana on purpose to show you how easy this is. Now that I'm doing it right. <laughs> it's funny how that works. Things get easier as you're doing them correctly. So... Um, I'm going to create, let me start again. Let me start again. I, I don't want you to miss anything here. Stack management. Also, there's, um, if I go back to that home inside of here, there is a developer tools and I can put that same, uh, same get in here, I believe. Whoops. And have the data uh, not found. I don't know what's, is it not on two lines? There, yeah, so in the document right in here, 
inside of the dev tools. Anyway, um, let's go to do how, how, right, from stack management, we need an index pattern. And I'm going to get rid of this index pattern and just show you how to create one from that data. So index patterns, right, create index pattern. And in here, we're going to type in dev. And there's our DevNet Learn interface. And this was the mistake. And by the way, see how I can do star and it matches them all? Well, this is what they had, the, what they were getting at. Just index all of them separately. Then you can pick and choose the indexes you want to com combine. So in this index pattern, I, I'm just going to have this as my index pattern because that's all I've indexed for now. But I could easily change this to be DevNet 9K star and include show learned BRFs or the other things, right? So let's just do the star and next step. Now here, look at time field. Well, ingest time. Amazing. It's no longer John's <laughs> special time step. It's ingest time, which we've already looked at. So we're going to create the index pattern. Now it has all these fields and all this great stuff. The format, the type here, there's Boolean types, text types. Um, if I look for that ingest time, it's a date type, searchable, aggregatable, right? You get the idea. Look at all this. Just from learned interfaces, there's over 3,000 fields. Wait till I'm done with the full device and everything there is to learn. So now we have an index pattern. We can go and make a new dashboard. And let's make a visualization. And let's show off that timestamp. So let's actually make that line graph that I was trying to make earlier. And we're going to pick our time histogram, no problem. Um, oh, hang on. i got to change this. Ha. Index pattern to the 9K. And now I'm going to find my data histogram, and it should be my ingest time. And let's do every um, 15 minutes. How about that? And then we're going to add management zero, be the maximum, let's say, of management zero dot counters dot rate in. And let's display name. We're going to change this to um, management zero input rate. No, that's the axes. I'm going to change this to be uh, just um, input output rates. And the maximum of management zero output rate. You see, uh, I'm going to change it here. Input, output, rates. And I'm going to change this here to be management zero input rate. And management zero output rate and by the way you've probably already caught on but look at it, it's working right there's the input and output rate now I might have to run some pings through here or something but let me run it again run the code again that is and I'll run it a couple of times and let me putty in Oh, uh, whoops, it's not that. Um. Can I ping it from here? Um,
There we go, there we go, there we go. I got something going through it. And let me send... So we got a, a bunch of pings running through finally. Sorry about that. I, I, um, I didn't have that plan. I had to find an IP to ping from the management VRF. And let's just keep running pings through there as we... Um, and I think Interface 5 has something connected to it. We might be able to make something happen there. I'm not sure. But let's go back here. And if, what happens if we refresh? Can what if we ch so last 15 minutes? So it's definitely gone up. It's definitely moved along. Now what if we change our scale here to be one hour ago? Right, you can see the traffic has jumped. Right, 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 right. I'm definitely saving this. Now what about what about one of these ones with the area stacked? Will it climb and show me the? Huh, I, that's not what I was expecting. I've sort of lost the visualization. Oh, I see. Well, there's the bar stacked over time. Huh. Wow. Wow. See, that time adds a whole new dimension, right? I was hoping line that they would connect here. I don't know if there's some option for me to um, enable... Curve lines? Is that going to give me curve lines connecting them? Let me just get out of my channels here so we don't get noise. Um, there we go. Fill gaps. Linear. Ha ha! And let's refresh it. Do I have more plot points coming in? Let me run it again. And with keep going with the pings here. And then I'm going to, okay, uh, let me find another interface with some numbers on it and add it. And then we'll have all four competing with each other. Now, I'm not sure, again, how quickly it refreshes or what what I need to do to, to get it to refresh. I guess I just need a way to continuously run the, the Python and then make sure this climbs. Well, let's save this to a library. Is there anything else we want to do? Management input, zero input and output rate. That is so neat. That is so neat. Okay. Well, that's that's. I just really wanted to get this video shot and show you what I'm up to. Um, I'm going to work on a whole bunch more dashboards. And then I can also download this and I believe make this publicly available. But I'm going to work on more dashboards. This has been a lot of fun learning, um, getting help from Elastic, uh, trying and failing and trying and trying it this way and try it that way. What if, what if I do this? What if I do that? I know time is important and I was getting time in, but I wasn't doing it the right way. Then I found pipelines and server-side processing. Really neat. So my goal is I don't want to get bogged down, right? There's a lot. I want to finish all the commands and build up a full database and then build more and more dashboards from all that rich data. So that's what I'm going to be working on, but let me get the video posted. I'll be around Twitter. I'll be in my channels, WebEx, Discord, reach out. The, um, there's lots of great stuff going on in the community right now, and um, I'm, I'm just one of the voices. There's many people out there, and we all collaborate and share, and let's make some really fun, cool things out of network data. All right. Thank you. Stay safe.